Hi there, it's Madeline Miyashita from Backlane Studios, and today we are going to be doing a tutorial on how to use Google Earth Studio. It's a bit different from Google Earth because it allows you to create these drone-like camera shots of locations you might be interested in researching for mapping our memories. So without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. So we're going to start by going to Google and we're going to throw in Google Earth Studio. This is an important word. It's a bit different, as we said, from Google Earth. This allows you to do some animations. You're going to click on Google Earth Studios. It will ask you to sign in with a Gmail account and something like that. But once you do that, you can say Try Earth Studio and it'll take you to a new tab in your website. So then we are going to blank project, but you see that arrow right there? We're going to go to quick starts. It makes it a lot easier to just play around with what you want to do. There's a few different options of styles of zooming in to the locations. We have orbits, we have zoom to, there's a spiral that has more of that circular feeling, point to point if you want to look at two separate things. And then there's even more options if you click on that arrow, including fly to and orbit, which is what we're going to be working with today. It has that zoom in to the location from a further point, and then it spirals around that building that you would want to be looking at. So you can type in any address. It'll come up for today's purposes. We'll use Casa Loma, uh, which is up in the north of Bloor area of Toronto. And then it'll show you what you are going to be looking at. You can move around the point and pause this video at any time if you need to go back and look at anything. Once you click that arrow to the right there, it's going to show you a preview of what it thinks you want. And all these different settings you can play around with. Again, you can spend a whole day just seeing what this is like. Uh, altitude meaning the height of which we're looking at the building. So the target altitude, you're going to want to keep relatively low in meters so we can actually see the building and not just the sky. And the ending altitude, same thing, not keeping it super high so we're just getting the roofs of the building. Orbit radius takes you further or closer to the building that you're looking at. So we're going to want to keep it relatively close. And then the approach angle is a bit more advanced. That's just depending on where you want to come to the building at. So you can always play around with that later as well. Clicking that arrow again, you can choose the length of your animation. So if you make them really fast, I do warn you, it can feel a bit motion sickness-like. So if you want to make it longer and then even only use a part of it, that's also an option that we'll explore once you do throw this into iMovie or ClipChamp if you're interested in using this type of footage. So, it's done all its coding things for you, and you can press the play button to see what it looks like so far. Looking good, looking good, going fully around the building. Again, in this platform, it might be a little, it's not as good as a high definition camera. It's a bit blocky. Uh, so sometimes if we take that a bit further out, we'll notice less of that blocky format. So another thing you can do to adjust all of these different positions is click on the right side there and press the two, which will split screen. And it'll show you what the map is seeing as opposed to just what the satellite images show. So as you zoom in on that left screen, you can see exactly where it is, so where we're around Davenport and we're getting close to Bathurst Street. So if you want to take it out at certain points to see different sides of the building, you can do that by adjusting where the keyframes are. So you'll see those little diamonds on the second half of your screen. Those can be adjusted when you put the red line over top of them as to how far away you want to be, how high you want to be in the air. Oh, a glitch. You don't want to be in the trees, right? So it's something to play around with and you can also move the point at exactly where it's focusing and it'll circle around that new point. So if you got it a bit off and you're a bit, you know, too much to the apartment next to you, you can always just move that over once you've typed in that address from before. And you'll see how it circles and where it is in the sky when it's going around on that left side of the screen there, which is really cool. Again, you can always play around with where it's circling to, so you can adjust those points and bring it closer, bring it further away. One thing to be careful about is this, is if you move them too much, sometimes it might get a little choppy and be going up and down between all of the settings that you've put in. Uh, but it's another thing to always play around with, and even if you get to a point where you decide, oh, like that was a glitch right there, what you can always do is, once you have the video that we'll get to later, you can always cut out certain parts or only use the certain half. Maybe you only want the southwest side of the building, 
then you can just focus on that part. And I personally think it is easier to just chop it up after it's done versus trying to get it perfect in this platform. There's a lot of settings you'll see that I've clicked on when you click add attributes. I'm not super worried about those today, so let's get right to rendering it. Once you get to this page, you're gonna wanna name your file. Today we're gonna name it Castle Loma Drone. And then I would recommend rendering it as a video, as a .mp4 file, because that'll be easier to use later. You can adjust for copyright issues. The Google Earth logo has to be displayed, but you can move it where it is in the frame, depending on what you what is least intrusive to you. And then once you click done, it'll start to render it. Now at this point, you're good to go. You don't have to do anything else. It will take a second though for you to get your files because it's trying to take in all that information you just put in, and then it'll be sent to your email address that is associated with that Google account. If you have a Gmail account, it'll likely go there. If you've linked up your other email accounts, then it'll go to that email account. You'll have to wait about a couple minutes or so for that to come in. But then once it does come in, you can just click that download link. It'll bring you to Google Drive. And then right from there, you don't have to do anything. You won't really see anything pop into Google Drive, but it'll go into your downloads. And you'll see a wheel for me on a PC. I'm seeing it download in the top right corner of my Internet Explorer tab. For other people, it'll end up in a different folder, uh, but it'll be there and then you can use it however you'd like to. Thanks for joining me on this tutorial today. See you soon.